make a house filled with 40 people. Then add a man with a mission and danger lurking behind every smile. That's our story, The First Stone, taken from the files of John Steele, Adventurer. <laughs> This is John Steele. If you like your stories hard with action and fast with excitement, come in, sit down, and make yourself comfortable. Because we've got a story waiting for you that's guaranteed to curl your hair and wear out the edge of your favorite living room chair. And the wait won't be long, because here's John Steele Adventures producer, Bob Monroe. Bob? At least once each year, and this being the usual time... I try to get across one particular fact to those of you who follow John Steele and his stories. And here it is. Like everything else in the world, our programs are the product of combined effort. These people, all of them, work hard each week to attempt to bring to you an interesting and entertaining story. First, there is director Elliot Drake, who worries and writes, too. Next to him in the control room is writer Lois Landauer, who has quite a following down Carolina Way. Another Elliot, Elliot Gruskin, has the responsibility of keeping this show time properly. Out here in the studio, we have the large and small of things, the men who make calculated noise, sound men Balt Schaefer and Adrian Pennett. Within queuing distance is the man who makes our musical moods, Doc Whipple. And in the glass booth handling technical matters is engineer Don Williamson. Add to these the cast we've used this year, whom you'll meet tonight under their own name. To all of them... For a fine job, thanks. And at least once each year, and this being the usual time, we're going to a party. It's like any other party, almost. The story itself begins as a car moves along a snow-covered street. There are three men in the car. Oh, yes, the story is called The First Stone. I'm glad you could make this, boss. You would pick New Year's Eve. Well, it's the only time they'll all be together. I know. Oh, right here, Maury. Uh-huh. Turn down the heat, will you? It's like an oven in here. Okay, Mr. Steele. Nice town, Maplewood. Yeah, yeah. You wouldn't think you'd find a foreign agent working a place like this. They're not particular. No, I guess not. I don't like to say this, Johnny, but, uh... What? You've been on this case for a year. The bureaus are beginning to want action. Well, I can't help that. This is a tough one. What have you found out so far? Not much. The blueprints, experimental data, all the records are kept in one room. And somebody's getting that information outside. Yeah, only I don't know who it is or how they're doing it. Only five people have access to that room. The records are in plain view of everyone. Mm -hmm. Nobody could copy them without one of the other four seeing it. Could they be memorized? I don't think so. This is pretty complicated stuff. Where are they kept at night? In a vault. The vice president himself takes care of that. Who's he? He's throwing this Windick tonight. You'll meet him. Have you checked him? He was the one that asked for help. Oh. No, I tell you, boss, this is a tough one. I haven't had a single lead in a year. Do you think you've blown your cover? Oh, no. I'm sure nobody knows who I am. Not even the president. Mm-hmm. What's the matter, Maury? This street hasn't been plowed. How can you get through? I'll give it a try. Eh, it doesn't seem possible that they're all in on it. There's a leak there someplace, Johnny. We've got to find it. Yeah, yeah, I know. Raymond Precision Optical Company has a lot of government contracts. They deserve the best protection we can give them. I know, boss, but whoever is behind all this is a pretty smart boy. Got any ideas at all? Just one. I tried to figure out how I'd go about doing a job like this. Yeah? You know, almost everybody lives in a glass house. We've all got something in our past we wouldn't want known. Mm-hmm. That's a pretty good whip to hold over somebody's head. Yeah. So I went ahead and I checked. I figured if I could find the one who didn't have anything to hide, we'd have our man. What makes you think it's a man? Maybe it isn't. Well, what you find out? All five have something to hide. Hmm. What do we do now? Well, that's why I wanted you here, boss. Tonight I'm going to go around to all five of those people and drop a subtle hint that I know what they're hiding. Then we just sit back and watch. Yeah. If I'm right, it's going to be an awful lot of glass houses with broken windows before we're through. 
How you doing, Maury? Oh, we'll make it. Uh, that's Elm Street up ahead. Mm -hmm. Well, it's a block down on the right. Okay. Oh, by the way, Johnny, I've got good news for you. Hmm? Huh? Bureau okayed your request for China. Oh, that suits me fine. This undercover stuff is for the birds. I'm going to be out where there's room to swing if you have to. <laughs> You'll be on your way as soon as you wind this one up. Good. The house, sir, uh, with all the lights? That's it. You beat it back to town, Maury. Oh, you guys have all the fun. Oh, taking a movie or something. There's a good one at the Strand. Uh, Mysterious, uh, uh, traveler. Uh, who plays the lead? I don't know. Get going. Okay. Happy New Year. <laughs> Better give me a name for the night. All right, what'll it be? Call me, uh, Don. Don Douglas. All right. Now, there's going to be a mess of people here. I'll let you know which ones to watch. Right. Bill wasn't sure you'd be back in time. Oh, I wouldn't miss the New Year's Eve party. Uh -huh. Did you have fun? Always do, you know that. Gene's been out to California. Oh? Is this your friend? Yeah. Gene, meet Don. Hello, Don. Welcome to Maplewood. Hello, Gene. Let me take your coat. It's awfully nice of you to include this right here. Johnny and his friend. Oh. Hi, Johnny. Glad you could make it. Hello, Bill. I stand Crescent hasn't been plowed yet. <laughs> well, it is now. Oh, uh, this is Don. Hello, Don. Nice to have you with us. Thanks, Bill. Oh, dear, mm -hmm. you'd better drive into the Air and Wine and Liquor Store on 52nd and Broadway. We're low on scotch. Oh, I don't want to go and all the way And while you're the there, go around the corner to the Bird in the Hand restaurant on 51st and pick up the chicken. Oh, all right. You know everybody, Johnny. Just go in and make yourselves at home. Yeah, sure, Bill. excuse me? Yeah, Running yeah. one of these things takes more concentration than the other. Well, here we go. Yep. Hey, Johnny! Yeah. <laughs> You're late, will you, Ben? Oh, snow held us up. Yeah, I thought all the good stuff would be gone before you got here. Oh, I knew it was in safe hands. I will let you down. Mort, meet Don. Hello, Mort. Hi, uh, hi, old pal, old pal. <laughs> now, you two stay... You two stay... <laughs> Both of you stay right here where you are, and I'll go get you a drink. <laughs> okay. <laughs> stay right where you are now. Well, that's one of the five. Mort? Yeah. He's been with the company for years. Worked his way up from the machine shop. He's a technician now. Uh-huh. Hey, Johnny. Ah, hello, Phil. Play it again, Phil. Ah, oh, not now, baby. Please. Later. Hey, anything you want to hear, Johnny boy? Please. Oh, look, Sil, why don't you go get a sandwich or something? Just one. Okay, okay. What can you do, huh, Johnny boy? Uh -huh. She's been carrying a torch for him for years. So I gathered. Hey, Johnny, you seen Sil? Over at the piano, Joe. Oh, thanks. Sure is hard to keep up with. He has got just as big a torch for her as she has for Phil. Oh. <laughs> Three of them going round in circles for years. They important to us? Oh, no, 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 no. I'll let you know the fine when we hit them. Mm-hmm, good, good. There you are, old pal, old pal. We're looking all over for you. Here's your drink. Thanks, Mort. I told you, stay right where you were. And you move. Sorry, Morton. No, uh, you're lucky. Why? Last of the good stuff. If I didn't find you, I'd have drunk it myself. <laughs> <laughs> Every year it's the same thing, you know. I come early then by the time the good stuff runs out. I don't care anymore. Well, I'll remember that. <laughs> oh, I'll always save something for you, Johnny. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Come on, come on, come on. Let's go around and meet the people. Uh, what's your name, old pal, old pal? Don. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Come on. Hey, I've been looking for you. Oh, me? <laughs> oh, Johnny. Oh. Hello, honey. Did you see Mother got back? Yeah, yeah, she let us in. Doesn't she look wonderful? Runs in the family. Why, thank you, sir. <laughs> ah, is this Don? Oh, yes, yes. Hello, Don, I'm Joyce. Hello, Joyce. Mother said Johnny's friend was very good looking. Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. Well, she did. Well, that's her problem. <laughs> Come on, dance with uh, me. Later, huh? No. Well, I can't leave Don. Oh, dude. don't you worry about old pal, old pal. I'll take care of him. Yeah, go on, you two. Okay, old pal. <laughs> Hold me tighter. Oh, yes, ma'am. He didn't wear the suit I liked. Well, I wore it last night and the night before that. Well, I still like it. All right, I'll wear it tomorrow. Good. Who's 
John? Just a friend. What's he doing in Maplewood on New Year's Eve? He was passing through. He looked me up. Good friend? Yeah. Where do you know him from? The war. I'm sorry, Johnny. For what? I guess I was being curious again. Oh, forget it. I know you don't like it. Forget it, honey. It's just that there's so many things I don't know about you. You never talk about yourself. Honey. Sometimes I feel like I don't even know please, you. Please, Joyce. Okay. Oh, come on, I better get back to him, huh? Sure, Johnny. Oh, there he is. Come on. Oh, I'm going to go help Mother. Okay, honey, I'll see you later. Oh, well, I see you met Ross and Viv. Uh, yeah. Hi, Hi Johnny. How are you, kids? How's that new baby, Viv? Oh, he's just wonderful. Yeah. Start to talk yet? Give him time. He's only seven weeks and three days old. <laughs> How many minutes? All right, wise guy. You ought to get married and have one of your own. Then you'll see. Me? Yes, you. Uh, maybe I will. I wish you could have seen him today, Johnny. Now, honey. Huh? Oh, okay, but he was cute. Well, people haven't got a drink. Mort, old pal, went to get him. Oh, I see. Good old Mort. <laughs> yeah. How's your dad, Ross? Oh, he's coming along fine. He out of the hospital in another week. Ross's dad is the local J.P. Morgan, you know. Banker? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Maplewood's most respected citizen, huh, Ross? Yeah. He was the one who had that gambling house on uh, Route 29 closed up, wasn't he? I wonder what's keeping Mort with those drinks. Said it was upsetting the economy of Maplewood. I heard one guy drop 20000 out there. What's the matter, honey? Nothing, Viv. Yeah, I'd better go look up more. You coming? Yes, dear. See you later, Johnny. Yeah, Viv. Well, two down, three to go. I take it he's one of our five. Oh, yeah. Did you see that reaction? Hey, uh -huh. Johnny, where you been all night? Uh, oh, hello, Wendell. <laughs> I got the funniest story for you. Oh, Wendell, this is Don. Hiya, fella. Hiya. Hi, hi. Listen to this story. Seems there was an American soldier in Paris during the war, and he was sitting in this bar one night when a couple of Frenchmen come in and sit down beside Frenchmen. him. Frenchmen? Yeah. yeah. Well, he starts to listen in on the conversation, and he hears him talking about a petite noir. <laughs> well, he don't oh. understand French, so he says to himself... Wendell! Uh-oh. Uh -oh, there's a wife. I'll finish this later. Yes, dear? He needs someone to crack ice in the kitchen. I said you'd help. Uh, Hello, Johnny. Hello, Abby. Come on, now. Everyone has to pitch in, you uh, know. Yes, dear. I... You know how it was last year. <laughs> yes, I do, dear. Later, huh, Johnny? <laughs> uh, tell me he's one of them. Oh, no, no, no. Come on, everybody. What? Phil's going to sing a song for us. Oh, it. no. What'll it be, baby? Uh, something slow. No, no, you got to put some life in the party. How about, um... I can't give you anything but love, oh, baby, oh, huh? Yeah. Okay, come on, we'll all join in. You and me sing but love, baby. That's the only thing I've said of, baby. Steam a while, steam a while. Are you having fun, Johnny? Uh, oh, yeah, sure, Jane. Well, there's plenty more out in the kitchen when you need it. Well, I could use another. How about you, Don? I'm ready. Well, just help yourself. Okay, thanks. Well, 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 Jack and Inker, Don. Hi, Don. How do you know, Jack? You, uh, yeah. Looking for a drink? Yeah, where's Wendell? I thought he was cracking ice. Well, I took over for him. <laughs> really put your heart in your work, don't you? <laughs> that is the trouble with you old bachelors. You do not understand romance. You're a bachelor, too, Don. Huh? Oh, uh, yes. yes. What a pity. Jack and Inka supply the glamour in Maplewood, oh, huh? Oh, I wouldn't say that. Now, they met in, uh, in Berlin after the war. They're our big international romance. Oh, really? Where do you come from, Inga? I have lived in Berlin all my life. Eastern or uh, Western zone? Eastern. Here, let me get those drinks for you. Well, see, this is, uh, what, your fourth New Year's here, isn't it, Inga? Yes. You know, it's always been a wonder to me that you got her over here so fast, Jack. The quotas were so small right after the war. And... What are you drinking, Scotch? Yeah. Yeah. I heard that some of the guys had to smuggle their wives in. Have you got my comb, dear? Yeah. I think I will go sit back. Will you excuse me? Don't you think we ought to get back to the party? Oh, you run along with Inga, Jack. We'll be out in a minute. Yeah. Uh, 
Well, that's three down. Yeah. Seems like a nice guy. Yeah, you never tell. He's the technician out of the plant. Mm-hmm. Let's see. That's Ross and Jack. Who's the third? Mort. Oh, yeah. You yeah. haven't met the other two. Mm-hmm. What happened, old pal? I brought you out a drink, but she wasn't there anymore. Sorry, Mort. It's okay, old pal. Hey, come here. Hmm. I'll let you know a secret. I got one bottle of the good stuff to the way. Well, we just had a drink. Thanks, Mort. Okay, okay, Johnny. When you're ready, you'll let me know. I'll fix you up. <laughs> you know, you remind me of a guy who used to be in my outfit during the war. Yeah, why? Always knew where the good stuff was, you know? <laughs> yeah, well, couldn't be me. I was in the first war. Yeah, I know. Too bad about this guy, too. Why? Eh, dishonorably discharged. Uh, what did you say, old pal? He deserted. Oh, maybe that was the reason. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> well, don't forget, any time you want a good drink, you let Mort know, huh? Yeah. Okay. Sure, Mort, sure. Well, that takes care of him. Yeah. Kind of tough. It's not a nice way to make a living. Come on, let's get back to the party. Okay. You seen Cell, Johnny? No, Joe, I haven't. Oh, thanks, thanks. I'll find you. Hey, where have you two been? Out in the kitchen getting a drink. Oh, you missed all the excitement. What excitement? Ross and Phil almost had a fight. What about? It was nothing. Russ just had a little too much to drink. Why did he pick on Phil? Didn't you know? Phil used to work out at that gambling house on the highway. Uh-huh. Excuse us, Joyce. We'll be back in a minute, huh? Hey, don't be gone too long. I feel like I haven't even seen you tonight. Well, it's started. Yeah. Let's get to the other two, huh? Right. Oh, uh, Connie. Connie, come here a minute. Yes, Johnny? I want you to meet a friend of mine. Don, this is Connie. Hello, Hello. Connie. I'm just telling Don about you. Oh? Company's most efficient secretary. Johnny. This girl is the rock of Gibraltar, Don. Nerves of steel. Johnny. When everybody else at the plant is blowing their wig, Connie is the one person that never loses her head. <laughs> oh. Well, you know how you can usually spot the kind that crack up under pressure? This girl, <laughs> never. <laughs> Connie, did you always live in Maplewood? No. Where'd you come from? Why? I just wondered, uh... Uh, Barrington, wasn't it? Yes. That's uh, up near the uh, state mental institution, isn't it? But you are a nice guy, John. Will you excuse me, please? Oh, brother. How to be the most popular man in town. I know. But if we catch our fish, it'll be worth it. Yeah, I know. All right, one more. Come on, let's get this over with. Right. Johnny, come here. What? I want to finish that story. Oh, well, I... not now, Wendell. Huh? <laughs> You'll die laughing at well, it. Not tonight. I'm Let's living see, tonight. where was we now? Yeah, the G.I. in Paris, and he heard the Frenchman talking about the petite noir. Yeah. <laughs> and, and he didn't know French, so he decides he's going to find out what a petite noir is. <laughs> <laughs> so he goes out of the bar, and he walks down the boulevard, and pretty soon he boulevard. sees a... Boulevard. Boulevard, and he sees a very uh. distinguished-looking Frenchman, and he says to himself, this guy ought to know. <laughs> so he walks up to him, and he says, what is a petite noir? And the Frenchman whips out his gloves, hits him across the face, challenges him to a duel, and takes off. <laughs> and oh, now, uh, there's more. Yeah, uh, there's more. Well, the G.I., he says Wendell. to himself... Wendell! Wendell! Uh, oh, yes, dear? I thought you were cracking eyes. Uh, Jack uh, offered to do it, dear. Well, Jean needs some help Jack. in the dining room. Honestly, you men wouldn't lift a finger. All right, dear, I'll sit. Excuse us, Johnny. Yeah, I'll be right back, Johnny. Okay, Wendell. Yeah, saved by the bell of the ball. What ball? <laughs> 1890? <laughs> All right, come on. There's the last one over in the corner. Right. Oh, hello, Jim. What are you doing over here all by yourself? Hello, Johnny. Have some candy. Huh? Oh, Louis Sherry's. Thank you. Ah, I'd like you to meet a friend of mine. Don? Jim. How do you do? Hello, Don. You know, I've heard of you. Really? Yeah, one of the country's outstanding physicists. Well, now, I... But I hear. Oh, it's nothing to excel in the work one has chosen. You know, that's funny. 
Uh, what, Johnny? I always had the idea that uh, you should have been a doctor. No, no. Those long, thin hands? Surgeon, maybe. No, Johnny. I'm happy. Well, maybe you're right. I wouldn't want to be a doctor. It's too much responsibility. I'm happy. Especially a surgeon. So much can happen in an operating room, you know. The patient dies. Sometimes this can be hard to explain. <clears throat> well, how'd we get off on this subject? I, I don't know. Hey, Jim, uh, could I see you a minute? Well, of course, Jack. Uh, excuse me, gentlemen. Well, yeah. Well, that's all of them. What do you think, boss? Let's go out in the kitchen where we can okay. talk. Okay. Well, what do you think? I don't know any more now than I did before. Well, it's got to be one of that five. Maybe it's two of them. Sure, maybe it's all of them. Could be. I hope the next job Washington gives me will have an answer. This one has an answer, Johnny. You just haven't found it yet. Oh, yeah, I know. Let's see if I've got them all straight now. Ross, the gambler. Jack, married to the German girl. Mort, the deserter. Jim, used to be a doctor, and, uh... Connie. Uh, oh, yeah, Connie. Well, we'll just have to sit tight to see what happens. Shouldn't be long now. No. We'll split up. You stay in here for a while, and I'll cover the party. Okay, boss. Holler if you need me. Oh, brother. Sorry, Johnny. I couldn't help overhearing. What? So that's why you came to me. What do you mean? You don't love me. What are you talking about? I'm just about? the boss's daughter. Made your investigation a little bit easier. Look, I can't talk about it, Joyce. I'm not being curious now, Johnny. You were so right. I wish I never had been. I was a lot happier when I didn't know this story. Joyce! Oh, there must be an easier way than this to make a living. It's like Grand Central. Hello, nice guy. Hello, Connie. I want to talk to you. Go ahead. We're going to get out of town. Why? Because you point a gun at me? You got a better reason? Sure. Because your little glass house is getting ready to fall in on you. What? You know, I've been trying to find you for a long time. I don't know what you're talking about. Well, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you're not the one. Johnny, will you please get out of Maplewood? Why, Connie? I've worked too hard to forget the past. If anyone knew I'd been in the state hospital, I couldn't face it. Look, you know, that's nothing to be ashamed of, Connie. Somebody's been working on you overtime. Please, Johnny, please. Listen, honey, your secret is as safe with me as it is with you. You know, you need a guy that's got some... Sorry, I, I was just looking for Sill. Yeah, oh, Joe, wait. Come here a minute, huh? No, oh, what's the matter? Joe, would you do me a favor? Yeah. Look, would you take care of Connie for the rest of the night? See that she has a good time? Connie? Hmm. Well, sure. Yeah, I'm glad to. Please, Johnny. Don't you worry about anything, baby. Thanks. You know, it's funny, Connie, but I don't think we're going to go out Who knows? Maybe. Oh, I should charge admission. Hey, Jerry, old pal. Oh, more. Hey, what are you doing out here by yourself? Oh, I wanted to get away from the noise for a minute. Hey, come on, come on. Let's have a drink, huh? Still got some of that good stuff hid away. Know where I put it? Yeah. <laughs> Down the cellar. <laughs> <laughs> you go on, Mort. I'll stay up here, huh? Yeah. Okay, okay. Hey, hey, Johnny. Can't find a light. All right, all right. Wait a minute. Uh, somebody move the switch. Hey, there it is. Oh, yeah. Uh, come on down. Let me fix your drink. Okay. <laughs> watch your step. Yeah, well, you watch yours. Yeah. Okay, old pal. That's far enough. What? I said that's far enough. I'm a little sick of people waving guns at me. Stay where you are. I was wrong once before tonight. Maybe Don't move. I'm not wrong now. Get down, Johnny. Get down. Are you all right? Yeah, yeah, I'm okay. You dirty... Shut up, you... 
He's our man, all right. All right, how do you know? We figured it out, Johnny. What? He was taking little pieces of information from all four of the others. None of them realized how important it was. Of course, they didn't talk it over among themselves because they were all trying to hide their past from each other. You were right, Johnny. He was holding that whip over all their heads. Told them he wanted the information so he could learn more about his work and get a better job. Well, they'd known Mort for years and they all liked him. We, uh, we didn't know how serious it was. And Jim and Jack got together tonight after you talked to them and compared notes. We never would have done that, except there wasn't much secret anymore. We're, we're very ashamed, Johnny. Yeah, well, you should be. We know. What are you going to do about us? Oh, nothing. We got the guy we wanted. I'll take him down to the local jail for tonight. Well, use my car, will you? I'd like to feel like I've done something. Okay. I'll sneak him out the back door. No point in breaking up the party. Come on, you. Right. I'll get in touch with you in the morning, Johnny. Okay, boss. Talk to you about your next job, then. Why, so soon? Not much time to waste. Yeah, I know. All right, good night, boss. Good night, Johnny. Come on, get going, you. Oh, hey, Jack. Jack, would you ask Joyce to come in the kitchen and see me, please? You bet, Johnny. I don't think we have anything to talk about, Johnny. Don't we? No. All right, then we won't talk. Stop! Right. Now, uh, <clears throat> you listen to me, character. I'm sorry I couldn't tell you all about myself, but if we're going to get married, you're going to have to learn to trust me. Mary? I wouldn't yes, marry. Yes, you would, and we don't have much time to do it in either. Why? Because I've got another job at... Stop asking questions. I can't help it, Johnny. <laughs> you want to know something? I can't either. That's why I'm in the business I'm in. <laughs> Come on, let's take a look at this party. All right. Hey, Johnny. Johnny, wait. Johnny, you want to finish this story? Uh, later, Wendell. I see. Now, where was we? Where Wendell, was we? Uh, what about Joyce? I saw her. I saw her. I saw her. I see. So the freshman is going to do a G.I. So the G.I. says to himself... I gotta find out what this here uh, petite noir is. Yeah. So he goes walking down the avenue. I'm pretty soon the he meets uh, the avenue. So he oh. meets a cute looking French gal. You know, one of them real. Uh, uh, well, so he walks up to her and he says, and he says, yeah, and, and, and so, so he says to her, he says, Wendell, I've been looking all over for you. Uh, he, he says, you know what a petite noir is? Oh, <laughs> you may. And she says, Hey, uh, everybody! She says, Twelve o'clock. What you say? <laughs> to hear the end of that oh. story, I'll tell you someday. It was my joke in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> Title, The First Stone, the story of a man who went to a party where many faces covered one dangerous mask. False faces, that is. And if you like Johnny's story, friends, why not come back again next week? I'll have a man who sacrificed public acclaim for a personal greatness. I like to call it Stargazer. So until next week, this is John Steele saying a life of adventure is yours for the asking wherever you find it. Only don't look for it. It may find you. Well, goodbye, good hunting, and a grand new year. This program came from New York. Mutual is your network for sports. It brings you two terrific football games on Saturday. First, from the Crampton Bowl in Montgomery, Alabama, you'll hear a thrilling pass-by-pass, plunge-by-plunge report of the North-South Blue-Gray game, followed over many of these stations by the Shrine, the East-West game from San Francisco. Yes, for top football thrills, just before the King of Sports bows out for 1950, listen to the Blue-Gray game, followed by the East-West game, over many of these same stations on Saturday. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. <laughs>